Now, the question everybody wants to know, do these noodles taste like watermelon? In the age of this pandemic, nearly every step of the food supply chain has been negatively impacted. During the pandemic, they couldn't sell anything. Everyone is feeling the pit. He seems like a little emotional. Or does he have something in his eye? Restaurants. I'm scared. Ocean-dwelling seafood farmers far from civilization. <gasps> and especially large-scale manufacturers of yum. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. It's like nostalgia. In this exclusive series, we're digging deep into food factories that are mass-producing the affordable and convenient products we all take for granted. What is this? Skins of animals or whatever? Oh, just skin of animals. Today's mission, learning how a fruit trading crisis fueled by COVID-19 uh, oh, we're getting help. became an opportunity for food innovation. Your company has taken dragon fruit and you've incorporated it into what you're making already. I'm heading into some of Southeast Asia's countryside food factories. Where do you find a machine like this? At a garage sale? Where small teams and big passions turn simple ingredients into amazing eats. Oh my God. So how do they do it? Let's find out. Vietnam is the second biggest rice exporter in the world. Jeez, that's really interesting. With so much rice on hand, folks here have gotten darn creative with how to use it. Rice is used to make booze, <laughs> rice noodles. Oh, I'll have what she's having. Rice paper, steamed rice sheets. Mm. Our mission today is to witness how a modern manufacturer has transformed fruit and rice into something the world has never seen before. Before today, had you ever heard of dragon fruit rice paper? For you to appreciate what you're about to witness, we need to first take a step back and learn how rice paper is made in this super local countryside factory. And... Sin Chao Ko, La Hanshank. Thank you so much for having us here at your rice paper making factory. Miss Huey comes from a family of rice paper manufacturers. They've been in the biz for over 20 years. Here, she and her team of 10 are producing up to 1,500 pounds per day. Every day she wants like 600 kilograms of rice paper. That's pretty significant when you consider one sheet of this stuff weighs almost nothing. How do you even measure your production? She measured by the finished product. Joining me on today's culinary adventure, friend of the show, Chu. You have a huge machine here. Where do you find a machine like this? At a garage sale? <laughs> In this factory, the rice paper starts with flour. Could be rice flour, tapioca flour, or some ratio in between. In a large vat, the flour is mixed with water until it becomes one even, thick consistency. Then it gets pumped into the steamer. A giant roller picks up a thin layer of batter from the trough below. The silky liquid is evenly applied to a conveyor belt where it rolls into a steamer. After cooking and popping out the other side, this thin sheet sticks to a handmade bamboo pallet. Pallets that are also loaded by hand. Here, speed is key. Any gaps between the pallets means lost product and lost profit. As the pallets reach the end of the belt, a rice paper technician rips them apart one by one. Now they're ready to go outside and get a dose of sunlight, allowing the paper to completely dry. Right now we're in the drying area. There's a disconcerting sound. What is that? As it dries, the paper reduces in size, retracting across the bamboo rack, creating a positively eerie sound. It sounds like it's raining. Yeah, it sounds like the pitter patter of rain. I will ask her if this sounds like money coming for her. <laughs> the drying can last anywhere between one to three hours, depending on weather conditions. Have you ever tried to make a giant spring roll? <laughs> She's never thought of that. Okay, that's good. That's a good pity laugh. Uh, why does this guy have a show? Once drying is complete, the paper is peeled and stacked. Several layers of paper then descend beneath a massive hydraulic cutting press, where the sheets take their final form. 
These guys will be packaged and sold for dishes like spring rolls or rice paper salad. The last thing I want to do while we're here, if it's okay, can I rip off a bite right now? Mm -hmm. It's clean, it's crispy, and it's just waiting to be filled with other fun ingredients. <laughs> Fantastic. We've seen it being made, but now I want to see rice paper in action. Here, you can get it rolled, grilled, mixed, pretty much any way you can imagine. Most of this stuff wasn't always around in Vietnam. These dishes were developed more than 12 years ago by the rice paper queen, Miss Vuck. Since then, the popularity of this dish has spread like wildfire. Now, they sell up to 20,000 rolls per day. Here, this is a uh, ban chang kun. Yes. Nice. To start, we'll try two of their famous dishes. First, rice paper rolls with a side of dip. A rice paper sheet is sprayed with water. She scissors pieces of quail egg, then peanuts, dried shrimp, beef liver jerky, and Vietnamese mint. Should we go for it? Mmm, that's really nice. This food is as much about the texture as it is the flavor. I mean, there's some peanuts in there, chewiness from the rice paper. Mainly those two things. <laughs> a Vietnam seems to take a lot of pride in its rice paper. You see it used everywhere. Did Vietnam invent rice paper? Yeah, we invented rice paper. Are you sure? I'm sure. How do you know Vietnam invented rice paper? You feel it? I feel it, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, just a rooster walking by. The second dish is made with rolls of rice paper that have been dyed orange. They're cut up and smothered in chili sauce and mayonnaise. I like this one better. Me too. There's just even more flavor and more texture. When you were a kid, did you have this kind of a food? No, they have just invented it recently. It seems like every day, people in Vietnam are coming up with new ways to use rice paper. Yeah, exactly. Next, we're going to see how one factory is turning an oversupply of dragon fruit into a type of rice paper that never existed before. But first, what the heck is a dragon fruit? So right now we're in the middle of a dragon fruit field. I've never been this close to the farm. For me, I never even tried dragon fruit till I was well into my 30s. The first time I tried it was with you on this show like two years ago. <laughs> the plant itself is kind of like a cactus and then there's big beautiful fruits on it. Dragon fruit can be found in three main varieties, red, white, and one that's a bit yellow. I think we cut one off and eat one right now. We got permission to enter this farm? No, we don't have permission. This exotic fruit in Asia is actually native to Central America. But these days, you can find it growing anywhere from California or Australia Australia to here in Southeast Asia. Um, oh. oh, oh, we're getting help. Okay, she's coming. She saw me. You need to cut the male fruit, which tastes better. Oh, the male is better. Yeah, the male. Hmm. Hey, I, I didn't say it. She said it. She said it. This is a male. Yeah, that is a male. How can she tell the difference? The male has less lips. I thought she was gonna say the male has a little mustache. Try it out. Mm. Mm, super juicy. One million seeds inside. And then sweet, but not over sweet. Hey, look, I planted a tree on accident. I don't think. That's not how that works? I don't think so. All the fruit from this farm will soon be collected and shipped here. After the fruit arrives here, it's sorted by size species and quality. Then it gets a warm bath. Dozens of staff work to package the dragon fruit before it ships out. Some of this will be exported to China. Some will go to markets and some will end up in this factory. Sir, thank you so much for joining us today. This is Mr. Tung, owner of the farm we just came from. How long have you been growing dragon fruit? Nam, nam, he has been growing dragon fruit for five years. In the past few years, dragon fruit production has increased dramatically in the Mekong Delta. Farmers were trying to keep up with the huge demand coming from nearby China. That was until Corona. During the pandemic, there was a lockdown, so they couldn't sell their dragon fruits. Oh man. After the pandemic was in full swing, the Vietnam-China border was closed. 
That meant a huge surplus of fruit that had nowhere to go. Prices bottomed out, dropping 70 to 80 percent. Was fruit going bad? Was it being wasted? All of the fruits that he harvested during that time, he didn't waste them. There were still people come to buy, but they had more power to bargain the price. Luckily, some local entrepreneurs saw this tragedy as an opportunity. Creating whole new products like dragon fruit bread, burgers, and even rice paper. These new products resulted in new demand for this tropical fruit, helping dragon fruit prices to stabilize. He would be very happy if there are more and more domestic companies to create new types of dishes from dragon fruit because selling for China and other countries is not a very safe option for the farmer. Yeah, I totally understand. Now, I'm getting a behind-the-scenes look at how this brand-new food is made. Have you ever had a big person come to your factory? Uh, not yet. I'm the first one. Yes. This is Mr. Doan, the CEO. Some call him Mr. Rice. How many different types of products are you making here? Oh, we have rice paper, rice noodle, rice vermicelli, and some about the vegetable product. We mix with the rice. Oh. Hey, there's some rice right now. Rice paper. Ooh. Here, he's taken the old traditional method of making rice paper and scaled it up in this modern factory, using technology to increase quality, hygiene, and volume. We met a lady today. She's making 600 kgs of rice paper a day. Wow. How many kgs do you make in a day? Eight tons of rice paper. Oh, eight tons? Yeah. Eight, oh, that's eight, way more. Eight. This was one of the many businesses that seized the opportunity and helped to solve the fruit crisis in Vietnam. By doing this, you've really been able to help out local farmers. Yes. Since February, they've saved more than 100 tons of dragon fruit from simply rotting. When you started, yes. maybe you were able to take advantage of a little bit lower price. Now the price is creeping back up which is good for the farmers, but is that going to be good for you guys? We still produce, but we offer with our customer with a new price. Yeah. Brand new price. All right, people like new things, so I think that could work. The signature Mr. Rice Dragon Fruit Rice Paper starts with the D fruit. Cutting and peeling piece by piece and turning it into a type of smoothie that's mixed with rice flour and blended until it resembles Hubba Bubba Bubblegum. This beautiful bucket of peptabismal looking relief is pumped into the steamer. Here, a thin sheet of rice paper is formed. When the rice paper leaves the steamer, the Mr. Rice team splits the pallets. The color is very vibrant. Is that all natural? All natural. These get stacked up and sent to the drying machine. After 45 minutes, the paper is dry. Then it's peeled, stacked, and cut into smaller sizes quick quality check and it's ready for packaging. Is there any big difference between this and the normal rice paper? Yeah, about the repairing, about the material, mixing and steaming, drying, also different. Oh, everything's different? Air, everything, yeah. Wow. This product is usually shipped out of Vietnam, so few people have tried it domestically. He has never seen anything like this. I want to see it in action now, so I'm heading back to our rice paper prepping specialist, Miss Vun. Xin Chao Jay, thank you for having us. This is the dragon fruit rice paper. Before today, had you ever heard of dragon fruit rice paper? She has heard about the dragon fruit rice paper on the television, but she has never had experience with it. So it's a pretty exciting day. After wetting it down, she stuffs it with all the familiar ingredients. Peanuts, fried onions, quail eggs, coriander, and beef jerky. It does taste more pink. Can you taste dragon fruit? Not at all. Just the texture is chewy. It's certainly thicker and it's pleasing to look at. Maybe this is something you could make on Valentine's Day. I have to yeah. Should think about it. Wait, hold on a second. Anytime I ask a girl out in the past, she said she'll think about it. I just never heard from them again. Give her a deadline. Give her a deadline. <laughs> Are you going to absolutely 100% put this on your menu starting tomorrow? She should think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rice, dragon fruit is just the beginning. He's also invented a rice noodle that's made with watermelon. This is the watermelon vermicelli. How do you make this? The watermelon is peeled, cut into chunks, then liquefies. That gets mixed with rice flour to create the dough for these noodles. Two tons of flour and watermelon juice can produce one ton of noodles. 
Finally, this machine transforms the dough into vibrant orange noodles. You thought it was gonna be red, huh? Yeah, me too. After you mix with the rice flour and you steaming, the color will change to orange. Yeah, it turns orange. Maybe it even looks like pumpkin flavor. When the noodles leave the noodle machine, an automated slicer will cut them to equal length. Those get hung on steel rods so they can dry. The question everybody wants to know, do these noodles taste like watermelon? Yes, but not really strong. So it's just the gentle aroma of yeah. watermelon. Yes. The essence. You feel like there was a watermelon in the room recently. The dry noodles are weighed and packed in watermelon packaging, ensuring the customer knows that watermelon played a critical role in the production of these noodles. Before we leave, are you Mr. Rice? <laughs> yeah. Sir, thank you so much. Such a pleasure. I bet you're wondering if these noodles really taste like watermelon. I was too, so I took them here. This shop is famous among locals. It's also enjoyed by outsiders, like this young backpacker guy. Mm. Their signature dish, marinated grilled pork mixed with rice noodles, or buntit nung. So we just got back from the factory where they make noodles. They make all kinds of noodles, but we brought you a watermelon vermicelli. Miss Wynn heads up the front of the house, and she's gladly taking on our challenge. First, she boils the noodles for a few minutes. In a separate bowl, she preps the greens. Top that with our watermelon noodles. Grilled pork, grilled beef wrapped in beetle leaves, grilled beef wrapped in pork fat, spring rolls, pickles, crushed peanuts, and scallion oil. Does it look any different to you? She sees the difference in the color of the noodles. Really? Yes. So the normal noodles is the whiter than this one. This one is like off-white. I'm very curious if it's going to actually have a hint of watermelon or not. Cheers. If it tastes like any part of the watermelon, it tastes like the green part. Yes, it tastes like the peel. What about you? What do you think? Yum meow. Does that mean really yummy? It means the same. Are you sure it's yum meow? Did you try to taste very deeply? Yeah, you're right. It, it's very it sure about it. Okay, so I think we should take a bite with everything together. Mmm. nung, one of my favorites. Sweet caramelized pork, a little spicy, and then just some nice vermicelli noodles. She said it's delicious. That's great. When are you gonna put it on the menu? You could have my picture next to it. <laughs> she says she, uh, I don't know. Well, listen, I think this was a lot of fun. Uh, you had fun? Yeah, I had fun. You guys had fun. And the only thing left to do now, conclusion. Let's go do a conclusion. Vietnam is a land of entrepreneurs. Scrappy. He has been growing dragon fruit plant for five years. Motivated. Every day she has like thousands of guests coming. And creative. Was this your idea? Yes. These are the elements required to make something from nothing. She already found a formulation for success. Or to transform simple rice into a money-making machine. Put another way, a rice paper factory. From researching and shooting, to editing and mastering. Our 10-person best ever food review show team works hard to roll out the highest quality travel food entertainment twice a week. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting our Patreon. Patreon allows fans of the show to contribute a monthly sum and receive a load of extras like early video releases, private Q&As, and beyond. To learn more about our Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. And if you can't give or don't even feel like it, that's okay too. <laughs> We're just happy you're here. Guys, we did it. What another fun video. We had a lot of fun, and you had an equal or more amount of fun. Joop. Whoop. Thank you very much for joining me. Awkward handshake. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. A Peace. You know, nobody watches this far into the video anyways. I don't even know why I do it. We should go. All right. Good video, though. I'm full. Man, I ate a lot of mayonnaise.